Okay, good. I press buttons, and then it's going to spin around. So let's wait because it's going to kick in. We're live on the air, though, <laughs> so people keep listening. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Let's try that again. Get connected with Take-Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take-Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take-TwoRadio.com. And there we go. Welcome to Take-Two Radio. I'm Pam, the host of the show. But as we know, on Fridays we have Dr. Mary Barrett as our host, and we're thrilled to death to have her. She has two guests tonight. The first one is going to be Jim Mallard, and he has his own paranormal uh, radio show, and he's a paranormal investigator, and he's been talking to the people from beyond since he was three years old. So this should be pretty exciting. The second guest will be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and her name is Holly Vaughn. She's a travel agent and started a travel agency because of her love of travel and planning vacations. So, Mary, you all ready to get started? Yes, I am. Hi, Jim. Jim. You are Are with us. Yes, of course I am. Where else would I be? Hey, Jim, you're from (laughs) Pennsylvania? Yes. So so am I. I Uh, grew up in Pennsylvania. Which side? Well, the eastern side, the northeast. It was Scranton area. Okay, see, I'm from the other side. I'm from near Grove City, Erie, that general direction. A Pennsylvanian still a Pennsylvanian. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, well, I don't live in Pennsylvania anymore, but when I heard you grew up in Pennsylvania, I thought, aha, another Pennsylvania person. So, do you want to. Uh huh. What did you say? I said there's a lot of us out out there. It seems like every time I turn around, I'm meeting somebody has a Pennsylvania tie, so it's pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people come from Pennsylvania, and they're all over the state, so. But okay, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? We do know that you do have a take to radio, and um, it's called The Mallard Report with Jim Mallard. And now I'm not sure what day you air because I've seen two different days on here. So tell us about your radio show. Well, my radio show, I, I, I my website's I Talk Paranormal, and I kind of d- developed that because I'm not your traditional Polish radio host. So I, in that respect, I talk paranormal because I'm not your Polish person. And the other, and the other aspect, I talk paranormal because I talk ghosts and UFOs mm-hmm. and Bigfoot and all that other fun stuff. So I, I used to play on the paranormal quite a bit. And anything, actually, it's coming down to anymore anything that I find interesting because I've talked to people that have done um, uh, stuff, talked about professional sports being rigged to to fashion, to, like I said, the UFOs, the ghosts. That's the bread and butter. That's where the show will always come back to. But every once in a while, I just, I thought somebody will send me an email, and it, it just it gets me. And I, I'm like, oh, let's do it. And so it, it's a good adventure. It's been, well, next month it'll be four years, so I'm excited to uh, keep trucking. But every once in a while, you look at those milestone numbers and you go, I must be nuts. But <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Um, when can they listen to it? What days and what um, hours? Um, I think it. What? It's Saturday at eight. Yeah. Let me clarify. Let me clarify. I'm on Take Two Radio. I re-air Jim's shows that he does on another network, and it's the second and fourth Saturday of the month at seven p.m. Eastern Time. Um, um, it was every Saturday, but Jim was taking a break to redo some things, so I started doing every second and fourth Saturday, so I didn't run out of shows to re-air. <laughs> I've got good news for you, Pam. I'm almost, I'm almost done redoing everything finally. Um, oh, good. I ran, into, I ran into some legal, well, I don't know how much of this I want to discuss on air, but I ran into some legal issues with my duck. He looks too much like Daffy Duck. Um, oh, no. So I finally got the new duck done. So I, I'm ready to move forward now. I wasn't planning on doing all that stuff, but, well, as you can imagine, when when that kind of stuff comes your way, you, you drop everything that you're working on to take care of the issue at hand. So 
Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, you don't need to be getting in trouble. <laughs> but I mean, you kind of you kind of um, fit that with your last name being Mallard, so they can't hold that against you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> no, well, I've, I've got another royal duck drawn up. I've, I've got I got them about a week ago, so I've kind of got all the because as you as you can appreciate all the different size banners and all it's just oh, it's never right. ending it seems. So yeah, well, well you'll have to there. get that to me so I could. You'll have to get that new picture to me, so when I put your episodes up, uh, I'll use the new one. I know. Okay, like Jim. I said, it's just been a nightmare. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jim, you've been um, talking to the other side since you've been about three years old. Is that correct? Well, that's what I've been told. I don't remember doing it at that young, but my mom told me that. Your- she just like, kind of just blurted it out in the conversation one day. I wasn't expecting it. But what is your first memory of talking to the other side? Um, I don't know. I I just it's something it's always been like I, I don't necessarily even know that I'm really doing it. I mean, I'm not. I don't call myself a psychic or a medium or anything because I don't seek answers. But it all stems from when I was little. This is how the story was told to me, and I still do it to this day. I go out without. Well, uh, my mom was planting flowers, and I was uh, wandering around the cemetery, and I just start talking to different stones and different people. And I, every once in a while, I just sit down by one, and, and she said, you were carrying on a full conversation like you knew the person. And I'm like, nope. And I still uh, – and she hates going to a cemetery with me today because I'll start – I'll just go for a walk, and I'll, you know, she'll catch me somewhere for quite a while. And she's like, what were you doing? And I'm like, doing the same thing as always done. Right. So. Um, so basically, you're talking to the other side, but to you, it seems like it's the norm. Yeah, at least, in those, at least in those instances. And I don't know necessarily that I'm getting too much of an answer. I just get this feeling that they enjoy the company, and so I keep talking. It's not like I'm, I'm hearing answers to the questions. I'm just sensing that, that they want me to stay and have a conversation, you know, because especially the the ones that I'm mostly drawn to are the ones that you know somebody hasn't been to in, in 100 years. So you go and you say hello and let them know that, you know, people are still thinking about them. And you feel, I, I feel a certain level of comfort, and every once in a while I'll hear a phrase or something and move on with my, my day. So I guess that's probably part of the reason I don't call myself a psychic or medium, because getting a message is few and far between, so. Right. Now, um, you're also a paranormal investigator. So when you do your investigations, do you, um, I think what you're trying to describe is that when you're, when you meet a spirit or when you're in the cemetery and you just know the information, you're not hearing it, but it's just knowing the information is that yeah, how it's working degree. with you? Yeah, to a degree. I don't want to say I know anything great that is life changing to anybody, so I don't want to give that impression. But it, it just sometimes you pick up stuff, and sometimes, or the other thing is like I'll go to a new cemetery, like because I'm doing research on a case, and mysteriously I'll just wander off and find a stone before anybody else does, and they don't quite understand that. That kind of thing. Sounds like you have you're opened to um, the spirits to give you information. You're closer to them. And it could be that your psyche is just welcoming the spirits without you even knowing it. Could be. I mean, I, I try not to, um, I don't want to say shut them off, but I, you know, I just try to be careful and understanding of everybody. So, welcome to the report. This- that's where the spirits all um, tap into you. How do you, um, with the paranormal investigator, are you still doing the investigations? Uh, it's slowed down quite a bit in the last couple of years. I'm surprised because of all the TV shows and stuff. But I'm thankful because there for a while it seems like every person who had something that wasn't paranormal, there I said it nicely, was calling us. And so... It's been good to uh, get a little catch a break from people that have electric issues or rodent issues or, in one case, just 
um, abu- uh, not necessarily abuse, but drug abuse issues. So, so as they come available, and I guess maybe our process is better now too. We can start filtering those because we know the warning signs of what people are trying to tell us and stuff. So, right. So you know, you're trying you're trying to get active into the uh, into the investigation. What's the name of your team? And how many do you have on your team? It ebbs and flows. I think there's six currently. Um, probably more than that if I made a few com- phone calls to Meg, but six is probably a good number because it keeps it small and keeps it house size because most 95% of our cases are done in private residential homes and there's no need for more than six. Uh, my, my, my team's name is Meadville Paranormal, uh, MeadvilleParanormal.org. Uh, you can find just search Meadville Paranormal and you'll find it on the old Google, I'm sure. So. Okay. Um. Now, how many psychic mediums or mediums do you have on your team? Currently, I have one that I have on call. He he moved out of town, so if I need him for an investigation, I can call him and he'll come up. Um, and there have been times where I've been on investigations and didn't tell him and he called me. So I, I kind of. I don't want to say I uh, learned my lesson to tell him at least we were going out, but I at least give him a heads up now. So. Right. <laughs> now you do a lot of um, community stuff for people. Um, do you want to go ahead and tell us something about that? Is it due to the paranormal, or is it what is it? Well, the community stuff. Well, it's I'm on two governing boards for two different cemeteries, and the one. I wish I, I wish I had more time to devote to it because it really is in disrepair and it needs taken care of. And the other one, um, it's where I'm going to be put to, put in the ground. I know that's kind of cheesy way to put it, but so I have a definite vested interest in that one. So I do it because I think it's important. To, it's it's a small slice of history, but it should be preserved and maintained. And I mean, it has to be there for another hundred years. I mean, this has to be. So, do what I can to help that. How do you feel when you're in a cemetery? Do you feel, like, comfortable? Do you feel like, um, you know, not that you belong there, but just that you have, like, they're friends? Yeah, to a degree. I mean, I often say that is the place I go to clear my head where I can find peace. I know that sounds kind of backwards because of all the conversations I've been telling you I've had. But that's just where I go to catch a moment. Because it always seems still, especially during those times where I need the time to things get going too fast in my head. So I take that moment, and it always seems still there. So you feel more comfortable in cemeteries than you were like if you do a timeout in you know, your house, your bedroom, or whatever. You have, um, you're very comfortable in cemeteries. So have you always been like that? I know where I grew up in Pennsylvania, like when somebody died, we were always the funeral homes and stuff like that. And then we go to the cemetery. I've never had a fear of cemeteries. Um, How about, you know, you, have you been comfortable doing those steps when you were smaller? Yeah, uh, I was even when I was younger, like in my between like seven and seventeen. There was a couple funerals that I went to, and I I preferred being at the cemetery, even though it was well winter, than being in that funeral home. I don't. Maybe it's being enclosed. Maybe it's the you know the final pro. But helping, I actually um, was a pallbearer for my great grandma's funeral, and so even in that. There was a great satisfaction and peace just being there instead of at the field home where it was just all ner- – it was like a ner- I was a nervous wreck because, you know, scared of dropping her. But when we got to the cemetery where it was icy and cold, it was fine. So. Now, this is going to sound like a weird question. Um, do you think that you feel more comfortable among the dead than you do the living? Oh, without a doubt. I love the dead people. They don't <laughs> – less drama. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, so you're very, you're very comfortable. Have you ever thought of becoming a mortician? 
<laughs> no, I'm I'm not. I don't know if I'm that comfortable. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you're just very comfortable being. And I know what you mean about being comfortable in, you know, the cemeteries because, you know, going in there and looking at the, you know, the gravestones and just. You feel at home. I don't have a problem being in cemeteries myself. The only thing is, do you take any of those spirits home with you? No, I don't believe so. Um, You don't think so? Do you have to tell them to stay there, or do you feel like you communicate that they have to stay there? I never had, I, I haven't felt the need to communicate that to any one of them. And so, so I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I hate to say this, but I, I'm more worried about bringing junk home from other places because I am open to it than I am worried about bringing it from home from a cemetery. I can see that, too. Do you think possibly that since you go in the cemetery and you show these spirits respect, that they show you respect by leaving you go home by yourself and they stay in the cemetery? Do you think that's the way they show you respect? I would believe so. I mean, it's much better to be respected and honored and memorialized than disrespected and trashed and all this other stuff. So, I yeah, because you're that. respecting, you're respecting their resting place. You go in there and you're quiet and you don't destroy anything. You help keep it pretty and, you know, and all that. So you're respecting them. So it seems like they're respecting you by knowing the boundaries. They keep to their side of the boundaries and let you go to your side. Do you understand what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah, I follow that. And I guess the other thing I want to mention before we get too far off this topic, so I'm sure it will happen because I, I run my mouth a lot. Um Hey, we're from Pennsylvania. We run our mouths all the time. <laughs> I, I don't I don't investigate cemeteries though. Let's make sure that's perfectly clear. Um I'll go visit and, and hang out and do all that fun stuff. I do it during the daytime. I don't take any cameras, recorders. Every once in a while I'll take a picture of a stone and enjoy it later, but it's not like I'm trying out to get paranormal evidence from it. Um and I'm just gonna say I'll just keep this short, but the teams that go out and run around at night, um, your karma is going to get you. Oh, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I've kind of ran on that before. I'm sure if anybody wants to hear it, they can go find it somewhere. But um, just watch what you're doing. Right, okay. and I agree with you. And um, I don't know if you know it or not, but I am a psychic medium. And from you, from what I'm getting with you, Going into the cemeteries, you have the utmost respect for the spirits there. And I feel that when you go in there, you're honoring these people because this is their their place and you're showing them the respect and you and they know you mean no harm so to respect you back they leave you alone but i'll tell you they look they feel like they wait for you to come because they enjoy having you there they enjoy hearing you talk and your presence is kind of like a a visit for them yeah. and i feel that when you're in there you have so much peace and they have peace because you're not only getting comfort you know feeling comfortable they're feeling comfortable with you being in there too it's like if you want to visit a grandmother, you know, that's here on this side, and, you know, you make her happy and she makes you happy, and then you leave and she stays there. This is almost the exact same thing. I would I'd make sense to me. <laughs> and I... And I know what you mean by these people who go in and destroy the cemeteries and stuff. Yeah, they will get theirs. 
believe me. But as far as you're going in there, I feel you're very, very welcomed to go in there because you are a very honorable person to them. I try to be. I mean, that's how I try to live my life, let alone in this regard. Right. I just try to keep things. I try to keep things simple. <laughs> well, you you make this you make this seem to them like it's sacred grounds, and they respect you for that. And um, I also feel like they would defend you too. So you go in and talk to them. They're very glad that you're there. It's it, You know, this may sound really weird to people, but it's kind of like you're welcomed home there. And they're glad that you're there because you're the visitor. And you're a visitor that respects them and that treats their area with respect. Yeah, I get a I really good feeling with you and being in the cemeteries. Well, I'm glad that you get a good feeling about it because I, I, I get a good feeling about it, so I'm glad we're drawing the same conclusions. Yeah, I don't I don't feel anything, you know, around your, your aura seems to be very, very bright and it's very good and it attracts the spirits, and I really think that more things are happening to you than you are realizing. And if you sit down, and I do see you writing a book, by the way, but if you do <laughs> sit down and really think about this, you're you're going to notice a lot more things that you did not realize. And I'm also a hypnotist, so I would recommend, you know, if you know somebody who can hypnotize you or even if you lay down there very quietly and just let your mind take over, you will remember things from when you were small up until now. And I do think that that's going to help you realize what's happening to you. But you're attracting okay. you're attracting all good things. You're not attracting bad things at all. Well, at least in the spiritual end of things, it seems like I've attracted some bad people, but that's here or there. <laughs> well, you know what? My mother always told me, when they were alive, they didn't hurt you. They won't hurt you when you're dead. But I'll tell you what. Sometimes it's a lot better talking to the spirit world than it is to this side because whoof. There's no I doubt about you. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this question. What was um, – Pam's here texting me all these questions to ask you. Um, but they were my questions, so now I'll get to her question. She wants to know what your first investigation was about where it was, what happened, and what tools you used. In plain English, she wants to know everything. <laughs> well, let's let's not go to the first investigation because the first investigation was um, a learning experience. But what got me into well, what got me back into necessarily the curiosity, the actual wanting to look for, I guess was my son was six or seven months old, and we were at Gettysburg, and we were one of these haunted cellars. The storyteller is wonderful. I wish I could remember his name to complete the story. But he, there was only us and this other older couple to the other side of the room. I mean, this room probably held 50 or 40, eh, probably 50 or 60 people. It was a big room, but it was the middle of the week, and you know how that stuff goes in these storage places. But and I was happy because I didn't want to be in this packed room. And he was talking, talking, probably 20 minutes in, he started telling us about this kid who ran out and got hit by a stagecoach or horse and buggy or whatever. And my son started to babble and babble, and that was rare for him. He didn't babble like that. I'm like, who's he talking to? And the storyteller was like, oh, it must be the spirit of the child, and he gets the dowsing rods out, and they start crossing and all this other stuff. But I'm not. he's in the peripheral vision. I'm looking at my son babbling and carrying on, and he is looking probably six – seven feet to the left of the man speaking, not looking at me. He's just kind of off in his own little world. 
And I'm I'm hearing what this guy's telling me, and I'm processing it through. I'm hearing things, but I'm not hearing all of what he's saying. But I'm seeing my son act in a form I haven't seen him in a happy form. And I'm like, so is my son talking to the ghost of this ghost child that I can't see? And I went home. Well, I went back to the hotel that night and kept me awake for a while, and then came back home and. We told that my wife started telling that story to different people, and they started sharing different stories they had. And I'm like, and then I started piecing together some of the things that I, you know, heard about myself and wondered about myself for a while. And it's just kind of like maybe I should start looking into it at a higher level than than I am now. So that's where it all is. And as for equipment, and I'll I'll answer that part of the question, even though I'm not going to talk about that first investigation. Um, well, let me let me ask you a question first before yeah. you go any farther. Do you know that children are portals? That oh, yeah. they are closer to the other side with the spirits, and they see them and talk to them. Yes, he he he. Okay. Uh, let me tell you. Remind me to talk about equipment here in a minute. Uh, when he was probably two years old, he went in. My mother-in-law worked at a hospital. He went into a a fit one night that he wanted in this room, and it was a, a storage room, an oxygen therapy storage room. He wanted in there like he wouldn't believe. So she finally found somebody with the key and opened it for him to see that there was nobody in there because he wanted to see who was ever in there. He took a little one of those oxygen tank carts and wheeled it over a couple of doors down outside of the room. And he said, oh, there, all better. And he left, and we were fi- he was fine after that. I'm like, that was kind of strange. Well, we get the call in the morning that that, that woman – went into respiratory distress probably two hours after he left and passed. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So I I definitely believe there's more than we see and more than we know, especially with the younger children, because as he's gotten older, he has stopped communicating like mm-hmm. that, which is, which is probably, on one hand, it's good. On one hand, I, I wish he would still do it like that. But Yeah, so I have a... I had a two-year-old grandson that came up for a visit, and even while he lived here, he told us things. But now that he's 11, he doesn't do it anymore. You ask him, and I guess it's kind of like, you know, kids just stop at a certain level and then pick it up later on in life. Yeah, I think them, especially from, like, I'm going to say 4 to 24, just putting random numbers on it, though. Uh, life gets busy for them. They get interested in other things, and, and their mind starts going, and they start, I mean, they start going 100 miles an hour, and I don't think they could pay attention long enough anymore. No, and I'll tell you from my point of view, I've had my abilities since I was born, but we always put it up to anxiety which at that time wasn't called anxiety, it was called nerves. And um, I would know things and I would see things, but I wouldn't know what they were because I did not grow up in a psychic home. And when I was 38 years old, a friend told me to go buy a Carol deck of cards, which I did. That blew me wide open. Now, other people recognized something was going on with me, but they didn't know what it was either. But back in, I have a daughter that's your age. So back in the 60s and 70s, the paranormal and the psychic mediums, they weren't very well known then. It was like a fortune teller at a carnival, or you go to the house and the person will do the tea leaves, read your cards. But now, in your generation, a lot of people... I read how old you were, by the way. Um, <laughs> a lot of people know. Like my son, he's 38 years old. He's like, I scared the shit out of him. I read for him one time and told him a bunch of stuff, and to this day, he won't have anything to do with this. But now my other kids, and there's uh, my daughter's coming in after you. <clears throat> she was born in 85. My kids were not raised really too much in a um, a psychic home until, you know, 20 years ago when I started doing this professionally. And they've 
they've experienced with their own kids. They have the ability. Some of them don't even want to recognize it. Like my yeah, one daughter what, told my one daughter people. told my grandson, "Now don't you go to school and tell people you're hearing voices in your head?" Because he said, "I hear voices in my head." She said, "Don't go to school and tell people that. They're going to think you're nuts." And that's yeah, been that's, oh, that's about eight years ago. I, I tell people all the time that ask me, especially skeptics, they're like, "How? why do you believe? And I said, you've probably had something in your life happen, but you're just not willing to recognize it, that it was that. And they always get mad at me for saying it that way. But that's mm-hmm. okay, because I like, I like when people are mad at me. Um, well, how I handle skeptics is you never know until you try. And I had this one guy in one of my shows, it was my birthday, and I handed, in a bucket, I had some little stones that I had energized. And they closed their eyes and they picked one out. And he told me, he says, I'm very skeptic. But he says, what does this color of the rock mean? I said, I don't know. You picked it out. You tell me. He said, well, this is really strange. He said, because my friend that just died had a lighter this exact same color. I said, that's your confirmation from your friend. And he walked out of there shaking his head. He did not know what to believe. It's tough. Okay, so I've got a story for you I want to tell you. I've told this on my show, but I'll tell you here because it's a good story. I was at the community yard sales walking around. I had my sport in my, my team hat and so just talking to people, you know, not really trying to look for investigations, just having a good old time. And I came across this old man's table, and I talked to him for a few minutes and then walked away. And then as I was coming back through, he walks out from behind his table, walks over to me and says, stop. And I said, yeah, you know. He puts his, hip, his arm around my hip, and he says, looks at me square in the eye and says, I have to tell somebody, and I think you're the person I have to tell. He, said, he, point, he taps me on the hat, and I said, okay. Uh, my wife died six, I don't remember, six months ago, and I've seen her pretty much every morning since then, uh, before, when I wake up in the morning before I go get my breakfast. And if I told my kids, they'd probably put me in a home thinking I'm nuts. But I just, <laughs> yeah. had, I just, I just had to tell somebody that, She's with me, and I'm happy, and, I, you know, I said, well, you know what? Enjoy every minute of it because they're few and far between. And uh, he looked at me and said, well, thank you for getting it off my chest because I had to tell somebody. And I uh, gave him a hug, and you know, we went about our ways. And... A lot of people are afraid of the unknown, and that's why I think a lot of people will not recognize you know, that there are spirits out here. There's a lot of things that are unexplained, and they are afraid to find out what it is, like even my son. So he shies away from it, and they ignore it. But there is so much out here to be discovered and to know the minds on everything. Would you agree? Oh, everything. I mean, even past the paranormal. Just things that you hear on a daily basis, you need to think through and go, is that right? Is that how it's supposed to be? So. Well, I know paranormal investigators and especially the psychic mediums have bad names because of people who are scammers. And I put up on my website, which you can go look at it after this, at maryberry.org, and it gives just a couple listings on what to look for when you go visit a psychic medium. And, you know, I've heard people cut down psychics and mediums just from hearsay. And I tell them, I said, look, just have an open mind. Don't believe somebody just because they say the person's bad. But yeah. have an open mind, but use common sense. Same thing with the investigator. I heard, well, I'm not going to let people come in my house because they'll rip me off. Well, well oh, they want to help you. They're not going to rip you off. Yeah. I mean, that's the troubling thing. There's a lot of groups out there that want money, 
and that's their prerogative. If you can find somebody to pay it, that's fine. I personally disagree with it. I've never charged a dime for an investigation because I'm out. I have more questions than answers, and I'm not sure I'm using the correct methodology or understanding to help these people wholeheartedly. I mean, if I was a plumber and I went in and fixed your pipe and you could see the result, you could see the result, there's value to that. But in a spiritual end of things, me being there for six hours is not going to solve your spiritual problems. I mean, it may be a good evening for us, but it's not, I mean, that whatever is going wrong with your spiritual life is still going to be there when I leave. So even if I do a house blessing or cleansing or any of that stuff, that doesn't really change what's going on with you or your attitude towards it all. So. And that's true. And I've had the same attitude when people call me. Um, and I had one woman call me one time. She didn't believe anything that I told her. And until I finally told her something um, that she didn't, that I could not have possibly known. And I do ask um, my guides to let me know confirmation, clear confirmation. And I'm going to say this, and Pam is going to kill me, and I hope, you know, <laughs> it's not against regulations, but I'm going to say this anyway. <clears throat> this woman called me up. She would not believe it. Dang thing I told her. I said, okay, um, do you know me? No. I said, does your boyfriend know me? She said, no. I said, okay, well, if I don't know you and I don't know your boyfriend, but you're not being I'm saying, are you? No. Okay. Your boyfriend has a mole on his penis. She turned around and she said, what? How do you know that? I said, I don't know. It was <laughs> told to me. She didn't have a problem believing me afterwards. Yeah, that's how it works. So I mean, that's how it takes takes one one moment of definitive. I'm using air quotes to your truth to change somebody's life. Mhm. Yeah, and you know, people sure be skeptic, but if you're a skeptic, go in with an open mind. <clears throat> so, and a lot of people. Now I'm seeing are more open-minded now than they were even in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, and it, we have to explain what the open mind is. It's a willingness to think outside your comfort level. Because I, I hear a lot of people saying, I'm open-minded, and then you ask them about something. Often I'll ask something about ancient aliens or something just totally strange just to see where they're at. And they always, they always come back with a very rigid answer. And I'm like, well, then you're not so open-minded then. But <laughs> I get myself in a lot of trouble yeah, with and, sometimes. You know, you have to want answers. They have to be willing to listen to the answers. And I'll, I'll, and I'll lay on top just, of that. I'll layer on top Do of that. I have to be one. I'll layer on top of that. You have to be one to ask more questions to get your first answer. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of people are afraid to ask the questions because, you know, number one, they either think it's a stupid question, which there are no stupid questions. Number two, they're afraid of the answer. Yeah, that's always true. And I hear a lot where. Paranormal teams do not charge, but psychic mediums do. And they're like, well, if you've got this gift, why are you charging? Well, we charge because otherwise we would be doing this 24 hours a day and not making any money, not being able to work a regular job. And, you know, we really actually have no choice. And then I had another lady today that got me and said she went to a card reader that was very vague, told her that um, she was she had death all around her and didn't really tell her anything. And, you know, I believe confirmation is very important. Not confirmation that 
like I could say, oh, Jim, you have a radio show. Well, that's general knowledge, but give something that nobody else would know. And that's right. what I do. And that shows people that I'm real. And when you go in and you clean up somebody's house of all paranormal activity and you walk out, those people know that you know what you're doing because you got rid of their problem. Uh, and I, you I, give I, them peace. Like I said, it, it's only a temporary peace, though, unless they uh, remain within the framework of what I, I don't want to say I tell people how to live their lives, but I tell them there are certain things they need to avoid um, mm-hmm. spiritually. And uh, some do, most don't. But the ones that do are, are grateful for it, and the ones that don't probably have called another team and moved on with their life because I don't hear from them anymore. Yeah, and it goes the same way with psychic readings. I read for this guy and told him, that there was going to be a robbery and he was going to be involved in it, told him who was with them, step by step. Well, he didn't think so. And the guy that I said was going to turn on him, he told me, no, that it wouldn't be him, it would be the other guy. Well, I didn't hear from him for about a year. And then he called me from a prison, a state prison, and said, you were exactly right at it happened exactly like you said, and the guy who turned on him was who I said. I said, well, if you would have listened to me, you would have seen that happening. You wouldn't be spending five years in the state pen, you know. All you can do is warn them. If you don't want to listen, there's nothing you or I can do about it. Yeah, that's the um, the sad part, but... That's just true of anything. You can tell people any number of things are bad for them or whatever and until they find out, just like the paranormal, until they find out for themselves, that's just the, that's a tipping point for life when you have to experience yourself. Exactly. Now, what, what would you say um, would have been your really – have you had any really scary investigations? Ah, not necessarily scary um, in a traditional sense. More so the moments of um, sheer coincidence <laughs> as they go. Um, those, I, uh, that's where it kind of gets you. I don't want to say it's like blood curdle and scream gets you, but the moments where I've been in, in um, two investigations, probably six weeks apart, and one of our team members had been talking about one of their in-laws who passed, and we, we, you know, we felt we had a connection with them, and we found visual clues. One wrote underneath an item of furniture in their house, and another spelled out with kids' blocks on a, on a shelf that somebody just put up there as a decorator's touch, and they didn't realize they even spelled a word until we got there. So, uh, which was the guy's name? So, and the other was wrote in kids' crayon. So that was kind of the ironic part of it all. Um, but there's moments of pure when you look at somebody because you've been thinking about something or think you have a, con- a connection with somebody on the other side and then you see it. I don't want to say they're scary, but they are that kind of moments that well, I don't want it puts you puts you on notice that there's something more that you don't realize. Well, I'm going to tell you something, and you can do whatever you want with my information. But usually a lot of people put a little wide open when they're in their mid to late 30s. And I know you're not there yet, but you're headed that way. No, I'm timeless. What? (laughs) (laughs) But I, I think there's a lot more to you and your abilities than you realize, like I said before. So I think you are going to start blowing open within the next couple of years. There's going to be so much that's going to be coming. You're going to be noticing, and you're going to be in more contact with the spirits and 
just be prepared. Yeah, I try to be. I, I don't think that you're going to freak out, but just know that you're going to end up being a portal yourself, which I feel you already are. I just don't think that you realize what is happening around you. Like a, a spirit could stand right in front of you and do a tap dance. Now, you may know a spirit's there, but you doubt it. You doubt a lot of what you see in here. Am I right? Yeah. So you're going to need to start listening better. And don't think you're crazy because you're seeing and hearing things. I have a daughter. She's 32, I think. Um, she's 32 or 33. I screw up her age and I screw myself up. <clears throat> but she was here. She lived, She was in my house and she was sleeping. And she kept hearing <sighs> in her ear. And she went crazy. She pulled the blanket over her head and she said, go away, go away. And she tries to block them, but they don't let her block it. And that's what's going to happen to you if you don't start listening better. I feel that you have a very good um, core with the spirit world. And I feel that they're trying to talk to you and to show you. But you doubt yourself and you don't have enough... um, you don't trust yourself enough. But listen to them because they are trying to communicate to you. They are, you are very, you're very good at what you do. But you could be a heck of a lot better. That's true for a lot of things, by the way. <laughs> you just have to let yourself open up. You have to listen. Stop being stubborn. Don't think that you're going crazy. I had my cousin's wife, you know, text me one time. I'm hearing this and I hear that. Am I going crazy? No, you're not going crazy. And you're not going crazy. You just have to have faith and believe in yourself enough to listen. And believe what you're seeing and hearing. And I hope I'm not insulting you or anything. I didn't expect this to go into a reading. But like I said, you're very good at what you do. But you have to trust yourself a lot more. I, I get. I know what you're talking about. I mean, you're not the first person to say that to me either, by the way. So. <clears throat> well, then that's good. Now, when are you going to start listening? <laughs> <laughs> well, as my wife would say, never. But <laughs> Well, I will tell you, from the spirit world, it's the easy way or it's the hard way. The easy way is recognizing you've got the gifts and do it, or the hard way is they're going to force you. Like with me, I had a website up, and I said, I said, oh, you're not going to do well, blah, 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 blah. I took the website down. I got a regular job. What happened? I lost the regular job. I didn't get fired, but I got laid off. So, okay, went back to my psychic work again. Then I got another job. College professors loved it, and they let me go because they were restructuring things. And the um, 256 students signed a petition to get me back. Nope. I had a lady call me up. I was working a psychic line. She said, do you have your own website up? And I'm like, no, I didn't. She said, get it up now. And she hung up on me. (laughs) Well, she called. I got it back up. She called me, and we talked. And I talked to her like two more times. Haven't talked to her again. Three and a half years later, she calls me back. And said, I'm glad you're doing well. And I said, Jeff, it wasn't for you. This website wouldn't be up. But the philosophy is, yeah, do what they want you to do. Because no matter what kind of job you get, 
no matter what you want to do, it's their way or no way. I cannot hold a so-called regular job because for one reason or another, I'm back doing this. And I have the education. I have a master's degree. I made it to my Ph.D. dissertation. I only had to write one paper to get my Ph.D. Well, crap happened. That didn't happen. But I think it's a doctor in my name because now I'm a minister and Dr. Divinity. God works in mysterious ways. When he wants you to open a door, that door is going to open. Whether you fight hell or high water, he will get that door open. So you can give in and say, okay, I'm ready and do it. Or you can keep coming and and tripping over obstacles until you get that door open. That's something for you to think about. Oh, it's a lot to think about, as always. <laughs> Seriously, you know, really think about that because, believe me, I tried not to walk through that door. I mean, I knew I could do what I could do, but I thought I needed a regular job <clears throat> because that's what society says. And every time I got a really good job, here you go. That's how things go, though. So if I were you, I would sit down and start on that book. And the reason I'm saying about that book is I do see you writing a book, but what you're going to do is, even like an outline, just start from when you were born, you know, and work up from when you can remember. And more and more stuff is going to come to you. And when you get to that point, you're going to say, I never realized that. Oh, wow, look at this. And then you examine it, and you're like, holy cow. And then you move on, and as you're going on and on, you're going to see things that you just blew off. Yeah. I can, I can see that happening, especially with some of the stuff that in that period where I was not paying attention to it as mm-hmm. much. <clears throat> yep. Well, Jim, our time is almost up. Um, I hope you're not mad at me. I didn't expect oh, you to no, turn that I'm into not, a reading. I'm never mad at you. It, no, I couldn't be mad at you for that, so that's okay. Okay, do you want to tell people again where they can find you and then your radio show that they can all listen into? Yeah, I'll tell you where you can go over to italkparanormal.com and the uh, old shows and all the information about the show is there. But I'm going to tell you I, this is kind of breaking news that about the. Um, my, I've been working on a new site. It's not quite done yet, but your listeners can go check it out and laugh at how far I have still to go. Um, TMR247.com. That's where I'm going to be pr- promoting here. I hope to have it done by the first of the month, but we'll see. Uh, I've realized that I, you know, done these four years of shows, and some of them I've done better at post-production than I have the others. So I'm going to take the time and go back through them and make sure they're all done at least better than they were originally. Because I, I went, somebody asked me, hey, can you bring up the interview of whoever? And I said, sure. And I went to my website and searched it up and brought it up. And the the show notes were, I'm tired. I'll do them in the morning. And that was two years ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start listening. <laughs> All right, Jim. Thank you so much for coming on today. And I've been really glad. I'm really glad I got the chance to meet you. Well, thank you, and uh, have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. That's the Miller guy. Miller. Um, I just want to let you know that the next person coming in, her name is Holly Vaughn, and she is a powerhouse. 
and we'll get on to her what she does as soon as we get through here. Um, I do want to tell you that Take Two Radio, Pam is um, offering people to come in and do commercials with her. You may want to contact her and see about that. Just taking your job, you know, your job and or your website or whatever you want to promote up a step higher. Pam is very, very good. Her name's Pam Powers, and she is the owner of Take Two Radio. So you contact her and um, jump on it because it's a good deal, and she's going to be filling up pretty fast because she has 1.7 million listeners, and um, it's good advertisement. If you want to know more about me, my name is Mary Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T, dot org. I'm a special host here for Pam, and um, I'm also represented by Kathy St. John, who owns Dreamwalker Productions, LLC.com. So contact any of us at any time, especially Pam. Get on with the advertisement. Okay, Pam. Thanks, Mary. <clears throat> Do you want to give I them your email Holly. address? Oh, okay. I have Holly on as well. So, Holly, <laughs> hold on one second. <laughs> you can contact me. Um, at take two radio at gmail dot com and that's with the number two. Okay, I couldn't remember that. <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> I, I was going to run your wonderful commercial but with the little glitch in the beginning I didn't run it so I was gonna run it at the end again. So yeah, take two radio at gmail dot com. And you and Holly have some fun. I can't wait to hear about this travel stuff, so you're all set. Oh, we Go have ahead. a little bit more than the travel, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> now I can rake her over the coals, right? I know she's nervous, but I got her. Hey, Holly. Hey, how are you? Ah, uh, I'm doing okay. You sound a little bit better than you have. I can talk a little bit better today. Okay, people, this is my daughter. Holly Vaughn, she has a cold, so that her gorgeous, my daredevil of a grandson gave her. So um, if you can't understand her, I'll hit, you, I'll hit her up the head for you. Okay, uh, Holly. I was, also, I was also told today that I laughed funny by um, Logan, seven-year-old nephew. <laughs> Oh, there goes my funny. Oh, hey, at least you're not talking like Mickey Mouse. I've done that a few times. (laughs) Okay, Holly, your name is spelled H-O-L-L-Y. Why don't you spell your last name for them? It's B as in Victor, A-U-G-H-A-N. Okay, now... Holly is a paralegal. Holly is a mom. Holly's a wife. Holly's the daughter. And she is very, very busy because not only has she started her own travel agency, she is helping her husband, which is my son in law, run his business. So, Holly is juggling a lot, too. So, Holly, why don't we start off and let's go ahead with your travel agency. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, You guys can find me on Facebook. Um, It's Your Paradise Getaway. And um, I often get promotions for different cruise lines that um, I will be promoting on my Facebook if you want to find me on Facebook. I also have a website. Um, It's www.yourparadisegetaway.com. And um, there's also a link that you can contact me on. Or you can email me on my business email, which is info, I-N-F-O, at yourparadisegetaway.com. And um, I can help you with anything you need. Do 
you do anything besides cruises? You said cruises. I heard that. We do do cruises. Um, we have a, a list of hotels, car rentals, airlines. Um, if you go to my website, you can also order, like, sports tickets or concert tickets also. Do you do international travel? We do. We go international. Anywhere you want to go, I can take you. What about um, helping people, like, if somebody calls you up and says, well, I don't know if I need a passport, how would they get a passport to go international travel? Um, I mean, you can get a passport by going to your local uh, post office. Um they're not too expensive. They're, I believe it's like $150 for a passport. Um, but I would definitely let you know prior to booking it that you will need a passport. Okay. When they book something through you, do they have to pay in full at the time, or how does that work? Um, you will uh, you will pay um, full, and you can either give me your information, which I don't keep anything, or um, you can go to your web, or my website and directly pay yourself if you if you were just needing um, like hotels or airline tickets or we have packages up there that you can pick, um, you can pay directly using your credit card on that. So if somebody calls you up and says, I want to book um, Lakeland, Florida, and I need hotels. <clears throat> Would they be able to pay you directly, or do they have to go on the website to pay? Do you they can pay me. Cards? They can pay me directly. So you accept credit cards over the phone? Yes. Okay, good. Um, now, I know that you just booked yourself on a trip, you and your husband, um, when on your honeymoon last year, you went to Vegas and you went to California, and this actually got you wanting to start your own agency, correct? Yes. I mean, I like booking vacations, and I just love the whole process of it. And, of course, I like going on vacations. So if I can't go on vacation, I would you know, love to make other families happy and enjoy their time. Um, we planned at Vegas and then, um, like, L.A. vacation, and we had so much fun. Yeah, and you set that all up yourself. I did. And that was before I started um, actually doing it. So, but it now, was... Um, now, knowing knowing you, I know these answers, but you're familiar with Germany, you're familiar with Italy, you're familiar with being overseas. So do you find that a, you know, helpful that if somebody calls you up and says, you know, I want to go to Germany, what is Germany like? I mean, it's um, it's definitely more helpful if I've been to the place that way I can give you my recommendations. Um, Germany, I would, I was little when I was there. Um, I remember some of it. Um, I don't remember all of it, but I remember some of it. But it will, I think it would give the clients a better feeling if, if they don't know where they want to go or if they want to know how something is. I'm sure they would much rather hear it from someone that's been there firsthand. Right. Now, um, tell us about your honeymoon. Tell us, like, kind of, you went to Vegas, and you liked we, Vegas, and you went on this trip. We went to Vegas. We, um, we spent about three nights there, or three days there, um, and we walked. We didn't do much gambling because Vegas was – there's so much to do, and we just were not there for a long period of time. Um, we went to see a Zoomanities show, which was awesome. It was the adult version of it. Um, so that was really nice for couples. And um, 
One thing about Vegas, I will make sure I tell anyone that goes to Vegas, make sure you stay away from those timeshare people. They got us the first day we were there, and without, they wasted my whole day of my first, the first day of my honeymoon. So, um, but besides that, we went to the Zoomanity show, and we walked the strips and went to different casinos, and um, he actually surprised me with, a, he rented me a convertible, which I didn't know until we got off the airport off the airplane, and um, after our three days in Vegas, we drove up to L.A., and we went to, um, you know, I'm big on celebrities, so I'm a nosy buddy looking at all the celebrity houses, and we went up and we saw the Hollywood sign, which if you go to my Facebook page, I've got a picture of myself in front of the Hollywood sign. Um, and we when used that I, picture we, also for this show, Holly. I'm sorry. We used that picture for your show okay. too. Being on the right. show. Well, that's um, that's in front of the Hollywood sign. Um, we went, and I was able to get us some tickets to Jimmy Kimmel um, night show, which was a lot of fun because I've never been in a live studio audience like that, so I thought that was really neat. And it was his favorite um, late-night talk show, so I thought it would be a nice surprise for him. And um, and we walked up and down Hollywood Drive and went, you know, to the Hard Rock Cafe, and um, and then we drove back. We stayed in L.A. for about three Days and then we drove back to Vegas for our last night, and we went on a champagne tour, which I would recommend. That that was a lot of fun, um, but I would really recommend doing it maybe your first night in Vegas because they really take you. You're on this tour bus uh, with comfy seats. They're adults, and they have champagne, and you have a bus driver, and he takes you around to different casinos and gives you a tour of the Strip. And it was a lot of fun, and he had a lot of information for you. I was just sad we did it the last night. I wish we would have done it the first night. Okay, now would you say that to go to these places, what about kids-oriented? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Do you have a lot of places for kids to go? Like um, we do. Actually, one of the um, places we do have is um, a Disney Cruise Line, um, and I get a lot of promotions for that also. So, um, I mean, to me, I think that looks a lot of fun. Okay, great. Now that you're doing your travel agency and you're getting, you know, you're getting a lot of people calling you and you're out there putting the families on their dream trips. Tell us what um, you do also, your second job, with working with your husband. Okay. Um, My husband is a um, truck driver. He he started a small um, trucking company before we got married, before we met. Um, But he's got a couple trucks, and he drives one of them, which – You know, his goal is to build his business so he can eventually get out of the truck and doesn't have to drive anymore. Um, So I just sit here and I do his um, paperwork, make sure everything's up to date, and um, kind of promoting his business so we can get more truck drivers and owner-operators onto with him. So what's the name of his trucking company? It's CF and Trucking. Can you spell that for people? C as in zebra, dash, E as an elephant, V as in Vicky, A N. Okay, so you have job openings at this moment? We do. Um, he's looking for owner operators. Um, if anyone has their own truck, um, we can provide the trailers. If you have a trailer, that's great too. Um, but if you have your own truck, 
um, we're looking to get some owner operators signed on, and um, he is looking for a truck driver. Um, but he would prefer the truck driver to be near Lexington, Tennessee. Okay, great. So how can they reach you if they're interested in a job? Because I was contacted on my Facebook, and somebody is looking for a job. So what's the phone number they can reach you at? Okay, they can reach me at the office at 731 nine six eight nine oh two four or they can reach my cell at seven three one three oh seven nine one three four. Okay, and what qualifications do they need? Yeah, because this is long haul trucking, it's not short trucking. What qualifications do they need and how far do they need you know it is it is long haul. He goes um forty eight states. Um, he definitely needs someone with a clear background that can pass a background check and a drug test. Um, and wants to have experience and that pretty and much is that he's wanting to work. I'm sorry? They need a CDL, right? Oh, yeah, yes, a CDL. Okay, and, um, great. and like um, I said, he he travels four to eight states. So, what is the beginning of age? Like, how? What is the youngest? Um, I believe it is twenty-one. It is. It's twenty-one. Yeah. See, 21. I was testing you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm new to that. I'm new to it. <laughs> She's got a lot going on, guys. But let me tell you something. Holly's very, very smart. And when she is determined to do something, she does it. So if you call her and you say, hey, I want to go to Hawaii, she will get you there. She bugged me and bugged me and bugged me. She wanted to go to Hawaii. So... One day she was sitting in class, and she was just about ready to graduate high school. I texted her, and I said, hey, you want to go to Hawaii? She almost flipped out in class. So <laughs> she has always been a traveler, and actually I have to say she's a pretty good traveler. She <laughs> enjoys going places. She's very knowledgeable. So if you call her and you want to know something, if she doesn't know, she will find out for you. This was and she will walk to you. travel more so I can go to Why, the place Holly? that you may want to see, and then I can go to that first here and then come back and report it back to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> We might not want to do that because then Granny gets stuck in babysitting and won't be able to go on a vacation. <laughs> but seriously. That's okay. Maybe, um, maybe I'll get over my fear of those and take him on the Disney cruise line, maybe. Uh, maybe. But <laughs> we'll have to see about that one. But seriously, folks, she is very, very good, and she does research and um, she will get you any information that you need or you want. She will let you know if it's good or not. Her son is nine years old, and she has a eight-year-old grand, um, eight-year-old. Son. He's nine now. Is he nine? Okay, I wasn't sure, so I was trying to think here. But uh, and she's been with kids because she's got two brothers and two sisters, so she knows what to look for for children, what's good for kids and whatnot. And I will say, um, if you ever do decide to go to Las Vegas, Circus Circus has a circus for kids, plus they have an indoor amusement park. So any place that kids can go, Holly will help you. Now, if you just want that romantic twos, she'll find that for you, too. So, Holly, do you have anything else you want to add here? Um, 
I think that was it. Um, the phone numbers I gave you for um, if you're looking for a trucking job, you can also contact me on either one of those phone numbers um, to book vacations also. Okay, let's give your website one more time, and then let's do the telephone numbers. Okay. Um, the website is yourparadisegetaway.com, and um, you can also find me on Facebook. And the phone number is 731-968-9024 or 731-307-9134. And why don't you spell your name, your first and last name, and the name of the trucking company? Um, my name is Holly, H-O-L-L-Y. Last name is Fawn, B as in Victor, A U. G H A N, and um, the trucking company is B as in zebra, E, B as in Victor, A N, trucking company, LLC. But Holly, one thing you forgot. You forgot to tell them and spell your middle name. Uh, my, you didn't say my middle name. <laughs> you. <laughs> You've got to spell your middle name. Okay, my middle name's Noelle, and it's N-O-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Now, can anybody guess, Pam, can you guess when she was born, Holly Noelle? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's pretty right. easy. <laughs> she was actually, actually born on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. Okay, I figured it was around Christmas, but I didn't realize it was Christmas Day, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, she doesn't, like like, she doesn't like her name, but Why? She, would really kill, she would have really killed me because my mom wanted to name her Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, Christmas. Oh, no. I would have had, it. I would have had to have a name change. Yeah. <laughs> now, Noel. Now that I'm older, Noel, I kind of like it now that I'm older. But mm -hmm. I'm Merry she Christmas. I could have done without. She <laughs> has gotten razzed so much, and for a long time there, she would not tell anybody her birthday was on Christmas Day. But now she's noticed that there are quite a few people that have their birthdays on Christmas Day. I've met a lot of people um, that I come in contact with, or when I was in high school, this guy I knew, his sister was on Christmas Day. Holly, I have one question a lot of people are probably thinking, but do you get cheated because your birthday's on Christmas Day? <clears throat> you know, and that's the first question everyone asks me. And no, I don't. My mom's always made sure to give me my Christmas presents in the morning and my birthday presents in the afternoon. Or now we kind of got to where we'll celebrate my birthday on Christmas Eve. Um, even my husband gives me two gifts. He said one year, you know, he just gave me a ring, but, you know, I can't complain <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have to share. share. I have to share with you guys. I was born on Easter, so can you imagine if my mother would have named me Bunny or something like that? So, Holly, do not Oh, complain. no. <laughs> oh, that would have been cute. Oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 But a, a lot of people for Christmas, they do their birthdays half half birthdays, mm -hmm. like in June and then December, and everybody was telling me, oh, she's going to be screwed out of birthday presents, and I'm like, no, she's not, because we'll have her, we'll have Christmas in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we'll have her birthday, and Holly, we still kind of have your birthday in the afternoon, not necessarily Christmas Eve, even well, though we know, but a lot Christmas of, Eve. A lot of times we'll have a dinner on Christmas Eve. Right. You do it that but way. Then, it just depends on the year. But then you also got a girl, a grown-up woman who's like a little kid. Oh, which is for a birthday. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> all right, birthday girl. <laughs> we are going to end the show, and I want to thank Holly for coming on. And you can tell all three of my grandsons that are there in that house that I said they were really good boys for being quiet. They were. They're, they're, they're playing the game of life, so they're learning early how to, you know, manage money and get married and have kids. Ah, okay. <laughs> we want to talk about that a little bit more. But thanks, Holly, for coming on. And um, thank we'll, you. Talk, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, have a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Holly. Bye, Pam. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Thank you again for having me on, and I want to thank everybody who listened, and I also want to remind you, if you want to advertise your business, come to Pam. She will get you out there, and with 1.7 million people listening, you will get your point across. All right, Pam the Bunny, we will say <laughs> good night. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Until Mary. <laughs> next week on May the first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do and that and down we now. have we have <laughs> we have prospective guests, but Mary's got to confirm with them. So we're not going to say who they are yet. So like I said last week, check out Take2Radio.com for upcoming guests and more. You can listen to the previous podcasts as well. And um, we'll see you again then at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on May the 1st. And thanks again, Mary, for another great show. And thanks to Jim thanks. Mallard, our special host as well, for joining us. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com. Hi there. Do you have a business? Do you want to take that business to the next level? Did you know that Take Two Radio is one of the top 300 shows on Blog Talk Radio out of over 15K shows? Take Two Radio has over 1.7 million listeners. So if you're ready to take that next level for your business, Contact Pam at take two radio at gmail dot com. <laughs>